Hi guys, welcome back. We're gonna work on some carbon fiber parts for scrappy right around the window trim. There's a little air trip that's bugging me. It's not required, but I wanna get it done just to clean it up, kind of give it a better look. I'll try and pop it up right here. <laughs> just, uh, there's black carbon around where I did the door and I really love the look. Also, I've got a new helicopter. Maybe if you guys are interested, I'll tell you a little bit about it and give you a little tour of that later. Uh, probably not this video, but maybe the next video if you wanna see it. But let's get another little part for scrappy. I've been sidetracked flying the helicopter I just picked up, so I haven't got a lot done, but I do have two or three videos I'm a little behind on, so I'm gonna try and pump those out right away, see if I can get some closer together. Hold on to your butts. So you guys know the drill. Let's build some carbon fiber, get scrappy done, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, all right, so I'm adding a little weight and it's, this time it's actually really not practical. <laughs> and it's just for cosmetics. So I had it all done right here and I tried putting on just a little bit of black to see what it looked like with a black trim around the rear window. And I liked it so much, I was like, dang it, I'll paint that black. And then thought, no, I can't. I got carbon fiber trim all over the front. So I'm adding carbon fiber. Oh, there's a big surprise. So I masked it off. There is one practical reason for it, um, but it's really about looks. But right here, there's about a quarter inch step as it goes from window to metal frame trim and then the carbon fiber all stacked right here. I mean, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be like five or six hours at least, but let's just get it over with and do it right. Back to work. Just rip it off fast, like a band-aid. Except for it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Get it over with. <laughs> well, this ought to do it. So, eh. A little bit sweaty. It's not even hot in here, but one side done. I'm gonna go hit the other side, let this alcohol completely dry up and evaporate out of it. It looks a little bit messy, but it's really not. The white just really stands out. It's extremely thin, even though it looks dark white, um, but it's filling in all the little steps between the overlap layers of the carbon fiber. So the body work's done. I won't need to have any kind of Bondo or heavy filler of any kind. The micro is resin based, carbon fiber, same resin based. So it's a perfect bond. It's not something that's gonna pop free. So what I'll do is now that I've got it alcoholed, I'll go to the other side, get it alcoholed. Then I'll come through and uh, do one more pass on it to clean it up. And then when that's dry, I'll baste it by just kind of smearing in some resin really tight and thin. Let that get on and then lay the carbon fiber, three more layers on the top. So it's three micro bodywork and filler all at once, super lightweight and a bonded agent. Three more layers of carbon. That will take almost no bodywork. That next layer is critical. I won't be able to just overlap the joints like I did on here that strengthened up the corners just to get some more meat um, because then I have to do bodywork where the steps are that you can see right here where each layer is. So this next three layers, they've gotta be butt jointed at the corners 
And then on the next layer, I'll swap the joint layers and butt joint into it. So I stagger the, the layers on top, and then when I sand it, I'm not breaking through layers. So <sighs> I'm winded. <laughs> I gotta do another one. I'm getting back to work. All right, guys. I don't know what time it is. 12 o'clock midnight. And I come in from a late night movie with my wife, and my son Dex has done this. <laughs> I couldn't be happier. So my son's rebuilding transmissions on the side for his buddies that like to race cars. So I think it's super awesome. <laughs> so here's fourth gear and here's third. And on this transmission, third and fourth are pretty weak. Pretty much, you see right here, you've got broken tabs and I'm just able to free spin this synchro. And same thing, if I go over here, this synchro is also just blown up, so. <laughs> They're gonna fix it. I'm putting in carbon synchros. I love it. So how much are you gonna save your friend from the transmission shop bid? I think I'm saving him around 700 to 1,000 bucks just from the transmission shop. Um, I'm charging him 450 for pulling the transmission, rebuilding it, and helping him put it back in. And then I'm throwing in some solid shift bushings just to make it better. No. <laughs> That's awesome. So how much do you think you're gonna make an hour on this? Probably 30 or 40 bucks. He's bought all the parts and then he's just paying me 450 for all the work. That's awesome. Way to go, buddy. All right, guys. Taking a little longer than I thought. <laughs> I'm about 50-50 on guessing how long a project's gonna take. This one, I thought six hours. I'm already into it more than six hours, but it's gonna be worth it. I still got some fine-tuned sanding. I do need to lay out some tape lines, get it ready for trim, then we'll pop it off. So let's get that done, pull this off, and get the other side. All right, moment of truth. Getting it off without a <laughs> carbon fiber sliver should pop pretty free. There we go. <laughs> Do a little bit of cleanup on the back, but looking great. We'll trim the front up, clear coat it. I'm really happy I did it. Now, there is something I did here. These are the original screw holes that attach the carbon fiber removable skin off the aircraft to the main steel frame and around the window. So before I laid this up, I went ahead and masked it all off, and then where the screw holes are, I actually just picked up some automotive car wax, a thick yellow paste car wax, and I shoved it into all the screw holes. Then I took my finger and kind of dimpled them in. What that did is it forced perfect little dimples on the backside so that I would know where to drill this and it will automatically line up because it'd be really hard to put this on there since I can't come from the backside, this is threaded nut plates inside the frame, and I can't get back there very well, I can pre-drill all the holes because I prepped it first. So I'm gonna go cut it, drill it, sand it, trim it, clear coat it, install it. <laughs> Let's get to work. Okay guys, um, I'm done sanding. You can kind of get an idea of what this is gonna start to look like. Got a, you can see a little bit of the coloring of the resin. That'll go away when I clear coat it. But I'm really happy with how it's turned out. That's gonna go really well. Um, I think I'm, I think the pinholes are pretty well gone. So at this point, I'm gonna clear coat it, sand it, clear coat it, probably put three layers on it, and get it on the plane. So it's going great. Let's get back to work. All right guys, so I had my trim done on my windows. They looked awesome, but there was something that was bugging me a little bit. A couple of my seams, because I built it in strips, um, when I sanded it out, they, they ended up perfect. But when I clear coated it, a couple of the strands butting together kind of had a little zigzag in it. I just barely missed the alignment. <laughs> it was driving me nuts. Publicly humiliated. Why, it's more than I can bear. What I decided to do was just Instead of putting strips on it, I'm gonna add one more layer of carbon fiber. I'm just gonna put an entire piece over the whole thing. Then I don't get the seams at the corner. 
And so I wanted to show you a little trick. I've done this before, but I duct tape the back side of the part so the resin doesn't run underneath and cause me to have to sand and mess up the shape at the back. But you can see these orange dots, and that is just the squeeze torque seal paint that you put on bolts to make sure they're not coming undone. And I put those in there last night, took a razor blade and cut them off this morning so they're flush. Why I did that, and I learned the hard way before, but once you put a new layer of carbon on this and that resin goes down in the holes where the screws go, even though there's a hole and you think you can find it, clear carbon makes holes just disappear. And even if you can find them, it's really hard to get it exactly in the right spot when you re-drill it. So by taping the back, squeezing in this orange torque seal, cutting it off, I can lay carbon over this then I'll trim it, sand it, but on the back side, there'll be bright orange area that's really soft that I can put a drill in and it will automatically center up the drill in that thick orange paste. So um, I'm ready to go ahead and lay a piece of carbon on both of these. Let's get back to work. You can barely see my part in here. <laughs> I tell you what, about halfway through redoing these just so that I could get rid of a little carbon seam that had a little zigzag in it. <laughs> I started to wonder if I'm just making a mistake, wasting all the extra hours I could be building. Never! But, now that it's done, and that, granted it doesn't have the clear coat on it, it made it so perfect, and you can kind of see right here, this angle through here, is, is almost non-existent of a step for the airflow over it. Yet if you look at the backside, there's a huge step right here that would have been at the window. And if that air hit that step, it would have tripped and jumped out a good inch and a half at the speeds I'm flying. But now that I've blended it, um, there's not even remotely close to a three to four degree deflection with a rounded arc back, which means that air is gonna stay perfectly laminar as it goes across the window. I love laminar flow. So it was worth all the extra work. You can see where I put in all the, the orange so I know where to drill it, so line back up, but I just gotta clear coat these, throw them on the plane. They almost look like fake carbon, because <laughs> carbon, you see the seams, and this is seamless. No, really, on a scale of one to 10, you are an 11. That's awesome. <laughs> and I make real carbon look almost like fake carbon without a seam. I'm pretty happy about it. We'll see how it looks on the plane. Let's get it painted. You guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. <laughs> okay, and what I've done, I just finished trimming and sanding these and getting them as smooth as I could, but I could still see a few pinholes throughout it. So I just mixed up some of the same resin I used for the carbon fiber, and I just brushed it on the whole thing. I put it on really heavy and then just drape the pill ply over it and then gently worked it out till I couldn't see any bubbles, any holes at all. And I gotta let this set up for a couple hours. I did use fast. There's different speeds of hardeners you can use or uh, resins and hardener combos. So this is fast, so it's gonna go off pretty quick. But when I peel this off, most if not all of the little pinholes in the carbon fiber will be gone. So I can sand that again, then a clear coat. There'll probably be a couple more in that. Sand that, do a couple coats of clear, polish it out. So this is now very easy, lots of little steps left. So I'm gonna work on something else and I'll just bounce back and forth. Hey guys, two more crazy looking parts. Um, it was just after midnight and I got this idea. I've been planning on closing out where the window meets the wing. And uh, I thought, you know what? I better knock it out so that it could dry overnight. So I finished it, I don't know, one or two in the morning. And uh, just got them sanded and trimmed. So the, where these go, right here you can't really tell, but there's a, there's a good size gap right between here. 
and the wing fairing goes over and covers it, but a lot of air sneaks between, and gets into the cabin, and I wanted a really warm cup. So this goes right there. That is the final touch, and there's a couple of nut plates I'll put in. It'll attach with a little bit of silicone in it. But with this on this side, this on the other side, I'm gonna have a completely sealed draft-free cub. So the only air in and out is what I ask it to do on the linear actuators. So I'm super excited. Let's get these installed, get back to work. All right, it's finally dry. I can peel off the peel ply. Almost no bubbles at all. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up. I know it was a quick, simple part. It's all done. I'm really happy with that, how it turned out. The air is just gonna slide right past that. There's no air trip anymore. No seams in the carbon fiber. It bolted up nice and tight, so this is awesome to have done. I do wanna answer a question a couple of you asked. I made a video clip about it. Um, rather than digging up trying to find it, I'll just tell you a little bit right now to answer some of you who asked a great critical safety question. I wanna answer that. Scrappy, if we had an accident, you always wanna have at least two points to get out. Of course, this is one. There should be another. If something happened and I went down on this door, you wanna be able to get out the other side. So a lot of people asked, hey, how are you gonna get out the other side if you don't have a door there? And why don't you have a door there? Well, the reason I don't have a door there is simply because where I wanted the comfort of flight, the throttle control, and clear unobstructed visibility down for search and rescue flights, I didn't wanna part that out. And I wanted to keep the controls right there and I didn't wanna climb in and out of it, but, the frame itself is designed to be a knockout frame. So unlike this window, which is not designed to knock out, when these screws go in, they actually pinch an aluminum C-channel and they pinch the window in place. And that window is locked. This one obviously is openable, but that side I needed a safety egress. And, and the way I did that is I've got the frame, the interior carbon fiber piece I made, and I've got the exterior piece I made, and rather than the screw going through the window frame itself or uh, pinching the frame tight, which would make it hard to get out, I actually designed it where, where the screw goes in, it pinches two carbons tight together, and there's just the slightest um, gap between the window and the door frame, and then that's got a piece of uh, sealant tape around it. Why I did that is I wanted an airtight seal but I didn't want it so tight that it couldn't slide out. So it's a designed knockout. Now, when coming by the plane this way, you'll never get the window out. But at any point about eight to 10 inches away from any of the corners on the window on that side, if you push, the window will bow out and it will slide out of its track. It's very deliberate and intentional. It's also designed with a window material that doesn't fracture that could cause cuts. So on the top and on the front, the windows are a little harder, a little harder to scratch, but they're a little more brittle on the front window and the top. But the sides are designed where they'll just bend. They don't break and cut, cause points to get cut on. So if I need to knock that window out, simply take my foot, push it through it, it will slide out, but it won't fracture into pieces. I don't have to climb through a bunch of jagged edges. So. That's the safety egress on that side. Thank you, all of you who asked me about that. I left it out of the video when I made it. My apologies, but I appreciate you asking. So anyway, that's it. I'm winded. I have a lot of work to do. So this is done. We got a cowling to build. Let's get back to work.